Hey everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Fight Chat Friday from TKD Coach Academy. So this week we're posing the question, are you struggling or having difficulty landing a counter, particularly if you're a color belt? And if that's something that is a challenge for you at the moment, something you want to improve on, you definitely need to stick with us for this episode. everybody welcome back to another episode of fight chat friday so today's episode is all about counter attacking in sparring so we did get a question in on one of our previous videos looking for some advice on counter attacking so we're going to tackle that today as a topic so in particular looking at the timing of counter attacking because obviously the timing needs to be quite precise for you to get that correct moment because in a sparring contest, whether it's training, competition, whatever, it's, it's quite dynamic and quite live. And once you think about the moment, it is more than likely going to be gone. For so sure. we're going to give you some ideas today on how to set up good potential opportunities to land some good solid counterattacks. Okay, so let's talk about that first part of it then, the timing. What are the kind of features that we're looking for with the timing of the attack that, or the counterattack? Uh, and when is the right time? When is the wrong time? Yeah, so let's look at the idea of counterattacking kicking first. So just as a kick from your opponent or partner is just leaving the ground and about to come up, that's a good moment for you to step in and maybe use a counterattack. On the flip side, just as it's about to drop and there's a gap maybe between techniques, we'll see some examples of that in today's video, mm -hmm. or as they're just about to drop their last technique, that's a good opportunity for you to step in and maybe pull a counter as well there. The time that's not decent to go will be when the leg is already up and in your face or aiming towards your body if you step in there it's going to be more of a 50 50 battle so you want to put the eggs in in your basket in terms of being in favor of getting the correct moment for you where they can't hit you back yeah and especially as we go over and we talk about countering hands as well i think the critical thing to understand is that particularly as this video is focused on people who are learning they're at the beginning stages their color belts um or you're working with coaching color belts, the first misconception around uh, the timing of a counterattack is that you need to have lightning fast reactions so that you're going to yeah. see the attack coming and pick a movement solution from your, you know, your, your memory banks and do something about it. And the reality is that you don't really see the attack coming exactly. And it's more about setting the opportunity for the attack to come so that you're already prepared. So luring the person in, setting the timing, for the attack so the person takes the predictable outcome gives you the chance to take the the counter attack yeah and then on, on the flip side of that as well for timing usually color belts are a little bit more unpredictable so in terms of their their attacks that they put out in front yeah sometimes it's harder to read them and even for experienced black belts if you ever spar with a, a color belt who's maybe yellow belt green belt because they don't have the set patterns that we're expecting it can be actually quite difficult to counter them so that is actually, it makes it a little bit more difficult for color belts as well, because not only do they not have the experience and the understanding of when to go, but then also the attacker isn't given the, the same the patterns is. and the, exactly. So yeah, it, it, is, it is tricky. So let's have a look at some prerequisites. And this is going right away into the proactivity that we were talking about, trying to create opportunities for yourself. And we'll have a, a, a quick example from one of the Slovenian junior female competitors here. Yeah, so the, the girl in blue hair is doing a good job of moving. I think that's very important that you need to understand first if you want to be effective with your counterattacks. Number one, you need to have space with you. So you can't be hanging around the edges of the ring because you need to have space and have the ability to move if necessary. Second, she's moving in and out and making it difficult for her opponent to get a good read. So that's very important. You don't want to be static. You want to be live on the feet. And then the third thing is you want to be just out of range that you don't get hit, but close enough that you can still make contact and step in if necessary, or you can step right through for direct counters, which we will see some in a sec. And one of the challenges with that, of course, for everybody and especially for color belts is as you try to be proactive like this, that you actually fall into a predictable rhythm. And so you'll need to communicate quite a bit with your training partners and watch your own videos back to see, are you being predictable? Do you always move in and out in the same speed and at the same distance? And you try to avoid that. 
yeah that's definitely a factor as well you don't want to be the person that's kind of waiting for the shot you have to be proactive the, the hint is in the name here we see tyra in blue is doing a good job of this as well moving staying in out using her front hand well and then picking the correct moment because it's hard for the opponent to, to kind of get a good read on where she is is she in is she out of range and then they go for a technique and then you can step right through the middle so just being just out of that range where you're almost baiting your opponent to go for a shot but then you're close enough to just take the counter if it comes and i think the carrying of the hands is very important because it's just the way our eyes work i mean if we see things moving in and out of our visual field if we see the closest thing to us is lower or higher it has an impact on our shot selection because you know we're, we're responding subconsciously almost to what we see so you can kind of lead a person's um you know intentions by the position of the hand and what that hand is doing yeah definitely here we see ivan in red does a good job of that as well he sets his feet and he's always ready so he's live on the feet ready to go he's not static and he just lowers Adam in slightly and then goes for the right moment on his backing. So he's not really waiting as such. He's trying to pick the right moment on his terms. And that's kind of important as well when you want to counter effectively. And I think what, what, what's really interesting here is that when you set a pattern of, okay, I'll move back from your front leg. Okay, I'll move back from your front leg. And then he just picks his moment when he thinks Adams is going yeah. to go for him and you know intercepts. So in some ways, this looks like an attack rather than a counterattack. But you can see Adam's just about to go and it, it actually interrupts the hands. Um, but he's set a pattern. He's kind of drawn Adam into a pattern by retreating, retreating, and then going at the point where Adam's going. And if you it's like one from here, one, two, kick, one, two, kick, that kind of a, you know, rhythm to it. So he's waiting the same gap almost or going just before the leg would lift. So he set a rhythmic pattern as well, which is really, really clever. Definitely, and these, you brought up the important point of the hand positioning there as well. If you're a color belt and you're just starting out and you're trying to get that right moment, the more you have your front hand in play, the shorter the distance to the, the target as well. So that will help you. Mm -hmm. And as well, if you mess up, that hand is there to, to bail you out and maybe cover up just in case that you do mess up with the timing. So one of the things that's really common with color belts uh, and anyone who's learning to spar is the easiest form of, let's say, counterattacking is retreat and attack so in other words the person attacks you retreat and then as their leg comes down with some degree of timing you'll counter attack sometimes with the legs often with the hands because it's the easiest thing for the, the brain to accept it's like i'll get out of the way and not get hit and then i'll go and try and hit you back but we know that that gives all of the agency to your opponent to decide how that works because if you're waiting for them to drop the leg or to stop short with the hands they have the choice not to they can continue they can double up they can trampoline they can transition from the legs to the hands efficiently and so you're running the risk of uh you know you back up but all you do is concede space and you get attacked again so that brings us into the realm of a direct counter and by this we mean you're going to go in almost the same moment as your opponent and you're going to hit them before they've resettled onto the ground yeah, so here we see um, examples of what we spoke about at the very start of this video in terms of the timing. So it's just as the leg is lifting or the gap between. So here the direct counters were looking at more going direct as the leg lifts. So you see Adam isn't biting on the first one, but the second lift, he goes right through as that leg lifts up. So that's the direct counter we're talking about. And again, look at that front hand position can be very useful, like we just mentioned just earlier as well. And then, it, you know, the same match, but the flip side of it, we have this circular back kick and we want to look at the leading. So uh, Ivan, in this case, is leading Adam around. Ivan's left, Adam's right. So he's pulling him, pulling him, pulling him, which means when he goes back in that circular action, the body is going to be more open because Adam's having to aim for where he's going to go or at least where he's expecting him to go. So there's yeah. a certain amount of leading in this as well, which is very, very nice. But it makes it also a little bit more difficult to put the sidekick on. So Adam is, you know, not giving the yeah. most direct sidekick when it comes to here because he's ex he's going to where he's expecting his opponent to move to. Yeah, just a tip for people that are, are maybe color belts and not very experienced. If you're using a back kick like this to counter a kick, it's important. See, Ivan moves to his own left here as we look at the screen. Um, so not his own left, sorry, but as we look at the screen to the left. And that mm -hmm. just takes the line of Adam's psychic off from the hip. So obviously the hip is his target. So he slightly moves 
to the side to take that line away and then opens up the space. So you don't want to stay on that line, take that um, side kick in the back and then get pushed over. So there Absolutely. is a different back kick between the back kick against an onrushing opponent and then the back kick that we see here to circle around the yeah, shot. So you need to know the difference. Yeah. Then we go on to the backhand. So, you know, this is Keane Ince. And we have a couple of clips of him. He could be quite well known for it. And we have some from Yasin as well. But, you know, key to being successful on this is that timing. You know, we, we see, uh, sorry, the, I suppose actually more so than timing is the distance. So you need to be close enough so that you can cover the front leg on its way up. If your distance is a little too far, you're going to end up with a, a position as the leg lifts that they're able to get their leg too high and they catch you on the way in. And then when we look with Carl Van Roon, uh, you know, it's the head positioning. It's making sure that his head is off the line of the attack uh, so he can bring the hand into play. Yeah, and then you see like even Keane's stance is slightly different because he's just a little bit more in and out. So you see here he's in, he's out, and he's setting his feet. And Carl just, he's a little bit more, let's call him mooching it. So he's just slight, small adjustments without a big, massive bounce. Mm -hmm. But still they're proactive in terms of the spacing they need. So that's just kind of like, almost micro calculations that they're doing in their head subconsciously so again just don't worry about this too much if you're a color belt this will just come with experience and and time in in live action sparring matches so very very similar to Keen's shot here from uh yasin where he's recognized an opportunity to get inside the front of the psychic so very often what we're looking for as a color belt is hey can you see your opponent's shin or can you see a gap behind their heel to their thigh and that's telling you that the foot is not in place it's not between you and them and there's a chance to interact with it and yasin is stepping in here in front of the instep uh, and trapping his own body against the shin so he can step through on kiki yeah the important po point on this if you're looking to use your backhand is you need to step into range if you yes. hold your position it's not going to work because legs are longer than hands, obviously. So you need to step in to get that um, hand through, right through the middle to get that score. So make sure you don't make that mistake. Step in on the backhand. A little bit more complicated with this shot then. We have the direct counter with a reverse turning kick or a banded olio chaggy. What, what really helps a person choose this as a counter is if the leg is carried, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good one because the space here, Artem has an, a nice high chamber with his knee, so there's a little bit of space under it, which allows the opportunity to circle around it. So you see there, he just fits the kick in that small little gap. So it's a nice little um, idea as well that we've seen with the earlier match between Adam and Ivan, where the, the spin cancelled out Adam's kick. And it's the same idea here. You might not always get the score with it, but it, at least it stops your opponent getting a bit of momentum off that front leg, especially if they're quite solid on that front leg. And I think this is a very relevant one for color belts as well because it often happens that uh, color belts sparring tactics or strategies progress in kind of like big chunks. So at the beginning, it's TikTok. It's like at the yellow belt level, we often see in the tournaments, it's I attack, you attack, and we go forwards and backwards. And sometimes we kick and then land and connect to the hands and you know, you get a score. And then you go up to the next level and we get uh, that little bit of a creative streak where we're creating the movement and then throwing the second shot to, to catch it. Um, but you also get the ones where their kicking ability is developed and you get that person who just stands and keeps kicking with the front leg and takes up all the space in the ring. And it, very often color belts don't have an answer for that. So having a spin that you can take under the leg, having some answer to the someone just carrying a high front leg is really important, I think. If you're to progress through from that green blue section onwards in color belts you need some answer to that i think yeah definitely and it's important to have it on both sides as well we didn't have a clip here of the the back leg turning kick where you switch the hips sure but it does depend if it's a left leg lead versus a left leg lead or right with right yeah. or if it's a left versus right battle you're going to need shots for different sides as well so you need to spin on one side and you need to come off the back leg with the other side depending so that's mm -hmm. something to be aware of as well you don't want to just build all your game on one side so building on that yellow belt progression of i go back then i go forward kind of thing we have timing the drop which is a very 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 common style of countering as well and one that you'll need to get familiar with and just to give the idea you can see that as each person kicks there's a moment as the leg is coming down where you have the opportunity to be the next one to go on top or you have the opportunity to throw a counterattack. So that's really the concept there of, you know, choosing the right moment to lift the leg or to pull the trigger on the counter. Yeah, and this is where the the, the idea of the spacing and the, the stance are very important here. So you can see Vitaly in blue does a good job. So as Alan drops his leg, he lifts his leg directly. 
So it's the, there's there's a slight moment there. You need to be in the right spacing. You need to have your stance ready and set underneath you. And then there's a moment where you can just, as it drops, boom, there's an opportunity for you there, a little bit of a gap. And then we can do the exact same thing with the hands, where here we can see with Mira against Jenny. Um, you know, you can... Uh, if the range is good you can be in with the hands before the leg can come back up again and this works best as well when the other person doesn't show a tendency to follow the leg directly to the hands um so if if they tend to like kick reposition kick it's a nice way to deal with it yeah definitely on the single shots i think i i think that like obviously this is is quite advanced here this back kick you just time in the, the gap between the linking of the legs to the hands mm. but i think that for the color belts especially if you're just starting out there is a good opportunity here like the previous clip we've seen with jenny of timing that drop off the front leg now as you said there's like a level up then when people start to link their legs and their hands yeah. and this is where we see the, the the last clip comes into play then there's a little bit of a gap between both if you can get that timing correct there's a nice opportunity there for a counter but and as we go over onto the member side we have a couple of like lower level videos picked out that kind of show how you learn to find that transition you know when we're looking at hey side kick and back kick don't interact you don't usually throw the back kick into the side kick but there is that moment on the drop where regardless of what the kick it is there's an opening for the uh, for the back kick and you know learning how to find that we have some kind of lower level examples you know as we go over to the member section so returning to this we also have a, a nice back kick from kiki and it's really obvious seeing the the timing of the drop on this one yeah, so Yazin is very active and very busy with a good intensity on that front leg, but he has to drop it. And we speak about this a lot on the channel, the, the, the trampoline or the springboard effect on the side kick. So if somebody is very strong on that, there is a gap somewhere that you can take advantage of. And uh, Kiki here in red does a good job of that, just finding that moment, the only moment really that there's an opportunity there to get a counter. Just as the leg is dropping, and I mean, Yasin looks like he's dropping the leg to go to hands. But it doesn't matter what he wants to do next. It's as the leg is dropping, once it's gone below the hip, reversing its path is really difficult. So it leaves the opportunity for that counter there. Yeah, definitely. Nice shot. And then here's a, one of the, the favorite ones. It's We call it it's like a pop step. And we're going to cover this in detail in our members video and our members section this week. Um, but as they drop the leg, usually you can just adjust your stance back and come over the top. Now, Vitaly is quite effective at getting this. He's very flexible and dynamic off the front leg. He doesn't even have to adjust the stance too much. Mm. But we'll go into this in detail of how you can make it effective for you. Yeah, and I mean, I think this is the step back jump shot equivalent, you know, from basketball yeah. where it's like you're, you're pressing into your opponent's, you know, they, you know, uh, body up against you. They, they, they muscle back in there and you just drop off and it creates that little bit of space that they naturally want to step into. And... You know the shot that we're taking you know is just acknowledging the fact that they want to step into that empty space and we're going to be there first so yeah nice, nice analogy. i like that one yeah i'm gonna steal that ah. so then we get into just the thing and we want to just talk a little bit about something that's a bit more advanced which is when you start to bring in the idea of luring or pulling the person to set up your counters yeah so here like when when you look at this it looks straightforward enough there's nothing crazy going on but it's, it's very advanced in terms of the understanding of the timing and the rhythm. So Jamie here in blue is doing a great job of understanding that. And as a result, he kind of catches Cody by surprise in no man's land for a split second. So that's kind of like the, the, the advanced level of it. Now, mm. you can bring that back a step. And like we've seen with Jenny in the earlier clip. So that's another option as well where you just fade back, find the moment that there's a gap and go for it. But you need to be committed. You need to be quick. And you need to be a little bit brave as well. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea here is with, with the pulling is still the concept that you're going to lead your opponent so that you're, you're, you're kind of making up your mind what the counter is going to be and then pulling them into a situation or leading them into a situation where that's going to be the right solution. So to put it, you know, in a very color belt perspective, if I'm backing, if I'm circling around the ring and I'm coming towards a corner, okay, um, and maybe I'm the, uh, the person who's uh, uh, on the edge in, in, in this case, I will see that, oh, okay, if I keep going this direction, it's, you know, it's encouraging my opponent to throw a front leg turning kick to try and stop me from moving in that direction, or I'm still inviting the side kick. So if I go a little faster in that direction to try and make up their mind and then stop short or take a little step to the back, 
I'll often end up with a nice direct line towards their their center just because they'll yeah. overshoot. So overshoot. if they're following me, I go a little faster and I stop. They go a little faster and because I've stopped first, I now have the opening to the center line. It's that kind of thinking. It's, you know, I'll go, I'll go back, I'll go back, I'll go back so that they stretch or they go foot to foot, which lets me close the distance and go forward. It's just thinking a little step ahead and pulling, lowering or dictating the rhythm is where we want to get to with our countering. But we often started off with very simple things for the for the color belt so that we just develop good habits, you know. So maybe it's things like don't go back three times in a row. Maybe you go back, go back and attack. Um, sometimes it's, you know, just learning to be more sensitive in the distance so we don't make a big space so that when the person misses, they, they miss by a small enough distance that you're able to counterattack. You know, it starts with things like that. Yeah, so it goes back to those three rules we had at the very start of this video with the prerequisites. So make sure you go look at those again, just to have a good understanding of what is needed, number one, in your foundation before you even look at any technique. Absolutely, absolutely. So as we go over onto our member side of things uh, for this week, we're going to go and have a look at some of the these exercises, the fundamental exercises that we will do with yellow belts, green belts, blue belts, to instill an instinctive understanding of how countering is going to work and to help people really discover if that's a style for them or if they're better off being an aggressive center out kind of uh, fighter. So again, if you're not part of the member section, if you'd like to check that out, go on over to our YouTube page on your laptop, uh, an internet, internet browser rather than on the app on the phone and you'll see the join button there. And uh, please, by all means, join us, contribute to the conversation and join that members group yeah so we'll see you on the other side if you're going joining us for the members group if not we'll catch you next week for fight chat friday again absolutely